Good blessed Tuesday morning, uh, February the 27, 2024. It's about 7.50 uh, a.m. I greet all human beings all around the world with a universal greetings of peace and a blessing of God be with you. Doesn't matter what your political, philosophical, personal, nor your religious beliefs may be. Doesn't matter whether you're the richest or the poorest person on the face of this earth. Doesn't matter whether you're the proclaimed toughest or the proclaimed weakest person on the face of this earth. Doesn't matter if you're my family, friends, nor all my proclaimed enemies. Doesn't matter whether you like me or anything that I say or do. That's your prerogative. You have so many amendments to the United States Constitution to do as you please, long as you do it in a peaceful manner. One of them is that I exercise daily the First Amendment, the freedom of press, freedom of speech, freedom to associate, freedom to gather together in a peaceful manner. Hey, I got a few things that I want to tell y'all today. First, I want to show y'all a few things out here. You know, and I, I came out here about almost 10 minutes ago and just about everywhere I go. And this is no disrespect to police or law enforcement that's doing their job. But just about every place that I go, a police car or sheriff or some type of law enforcement official go past and they post up in the areas that I'm at. They may have a GPS on my vehicle, but I don't care because one thing about me, everywhere I go and most times I'm physically by myself because God is with me every place I go. Read Psalms 23 and you will know what I'm talking about. But you see, I go by myself because the Bible tell me no weapon formed against me will prosper. But anyway, I want to show y'all a couple of things out here where I'm at. I'm going to a, I'm a make a little circle around. I'm going to make a little circle around, y'all. Let y'all see the surrounding. But I'm going to show y'all something that I just seen, and then I'm going to show you the police that's posted up. Hold on a minute. Look like he's posting up to a different uh, area. Like I said, I don't have nothing against the law enforcement officials, those that's doing their job. You have some that, that don't do the job. I don't know what this one here doing, and not really. Uh, Concerned, but I just like to just show some time when I'm in certain areas uh, that uh, law enforcement uh, happen to just pop up. I'm trying to see if anybody going to get out. Yeah, it do look like somebody getting out. It do look like somebody getting out. I don't know if somebody, they might just be going in there shopping. It looked like it might have been the sergeant. The sergeant is the only black on the force, been the only black on the force for about a couple of decades, I think. But anyway, let me get back to the message at hand in a minute. Yeah, there you go. Uh, I kind of summary uh, how I froze up on when I was trying to show y'all where the police was posted at. I guess all clear. I ain't no shots fired over here. You know what I mean? It's just Raymond Ivy doing his thing. Raymond Lewis Ivy just doing his thing. You know? But this is this is where they was posted up. About where that truck at for going to the left in a little parking lot over there. They after they came from down this way. But uh, anyway, uh, let me go and get back to the message. Let's, let's get back to this message now. You remember I told y'all to get your, your pens and your papers out of your tablets, however y'all document things. Some people can just document it from there. But, but I just, I just want to try to show y'all something and, and I want to, I want to let it be known. I don't, advocate violence nor do I encourage hate 
I'm going to say that two more times. I don't advocate violence, nor do I encourage hate. I don't advocate violence, nor do I encourage hate. And I don't try to or attempt to disunify anybody. But when you're talking about unity, you got to know who's in that circle. You got to take a look around. You got to take inventory. You got to take inventory. You, 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 ha you have to have somebody to do some type of research. And then some things is almost self-explanatory. If you have somebody that had programs for 20 and 30 years, uh, it's supposed to be grassroots programs that's trying to uplift uh, poor communities, whether it's black, white, Spanish, Asian. If they try and they say they uplifting poor communities, you take a look at the individuals that's running these programs and you take a look at your community. See if it's coming up or going down. I'm talking about this with Christians and Muslims. You see what I'm saying? See, a Muslim, if they are Muslim, Muslim mean one who submit themselves to God. Or they may say Allah. Allah is an Arabic word that means God. A Christian supposed to be a person that be Christ-like, like Jesus. See, when Jesus had was feeding the uh, uh the multitude, you see what I'm saying? He wasn't feeding the multitude to get attention. He wasn't feeding multitude to come out of his sandals to put on some Stacy Adams. He was feeding the multitude because the multitude is the one that needed help. He didn't need help because his father sent him. A true disciple, they don't need help because God sent them. God would be their help. I'm hoping y'all paying attention. You see, you have too many people in the black community, black and white, mostly black, that's getting millions of dollars of grant money. And you see them starting off like Lester Gillespie over here in Charleston, Missouri. Y'all remember he just started off about 15 years or so ago with that S10 pickup truck. It was green. Then he got to elevating, y'all. He ain't elevating because he doing something for the community. He elevating because he using the black community as a whole to get rich for him and his family in his circle. You see, some of y'all don't believe that. You know, all you have to do is just pay attention. If you pay attention what this man and other people that said that they doing something for the black community like Susanna Wesley Family Learning Center. Y'all remember five days a week and sometime on Saturdays, it used to be full over there at 601 uh, South Marshall Street. Well, uh, what, is, what would that be? That's West Marshall Street. Uh, yeah, West Marshall Street on the corner of Marshall and Lee Street, the old G&H uh, a furnishing company. A building, GNH gave it to them. They wouldn't give. They they wouldn't even sell it to the black people that wanted to buy it and send it to their church. They gave it to Susanna Wesley Family Learners and gave it to them. Black folk wanted to buy it, but I'm gonna leave that alone. But if you pay close attention now, these people said that they doing something for the community. Now, these YouTubes are mine. Some people said they ain't going nowhere, but you don't see Susanna Wesley fool up. Uh, five days a week or six days a week no more. You don't even see them fooled up, period, no more. They losing some of that fun, and I'm, I'm trying to help them lose that fun, trying to help them move out of our black community, let the, some blacks that's going to do something for the black community get that building. Not just Susanna Westy, but Lester Gillespie too. But another thing what I want to show y'all is just gotta, you got to pay attention to these people. You see, they said they doing one thing, but the record speaks that they not doing it, y'all. They ain't, ain't, nothing, ain't nothing growing in the black community. 
Les Gillespie and Susanna Wesley, they started getting property, money, and riding nice cars when the other people that they have in their programs are starving. Now, if you're a dope dealer or, or somebody that he think that's a killer, he'll give you a job. Long as you keep that killing and dope dealing and, and intimidation and threats in the black community. He remind me of Clarence Thomas and Clarence Thomas' wife. And I want y'all to write this name down. Y'all know Clarence Thomas' wife is, I think, uh, Cynthia uh, Cynthia uh, Thomas. You know, she was supporting the uh, Proud Boys during January the 6th. 2021 on that Wednesday when they that riot happened. That invasion of the White House happened. They 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 give it another name, but let a bunch of black folks do what what they did, and it's gonna be a riot. They called it a riot when they killed Martin Luther King when black folks were tearing up stuff. That was a riot. But he had people went to our capital, but I'm gonna leave that alone. Take this name down, Crystal Clayton. C. Clanton, brother, C. L. A. N. T. O. N. Common spelling on crystal. Because this is some update. Crystal Clayton is a 22 year old black female. She's uh, her profession is in the law. She been uh uh, clerks for just about every uh, well a lot of Republican judges ain't nothing wrong with that because I'm not a Democrat nor a public Republican but she got connection with Cindy Thomas Clarence Thomas y'all know Clarence Thomas is a black man he black it in dirt and don't believe in civil rights <laughs> he don't think nothing wrong because I guess he was raised by some white Catholics. I ain't got nothing wrong with whites nor Catholics. I don't care who raised me. I ain't going to forget what God made me. And I take teach my daughters them. I'm black. Their mother was Puerto Rican and Dominican. You don't want to forget neither one of them heritages. But y'all write that down. Crystal Clayton. Let me tell you about her. She reminds me of Lester Gillespie, Rodney Jones, Rodney Jones, pastor. Uh, the NAACP nationwide, if the shoe fit wet. Uh, this female in the two, 2024 and 25, Clarence Thomas is going to hire her as his clerk. Now, you would wonder out of all these clerks, in the United States, why would Clarence Thomas hire Crystal Clayton? Why would Clarence Thomas' white wife have any type of association with, and I ain't saying that she shouldn't associate, but out of all people, uh, Crystal Thomas, let me tell you why. Google her up, y'all. Crystal Thomas. White folks caught up, and some black folks. Crystal Thomas made a text saying, and I quote, I hate black peoples. End of story. That's Crystal Thomas now, a black female, 22 years old, much as blacks going. Through. She said she hate black folk. Now you see why Clarence Thomas' wife, Cynthia Thomas, who was supporting the Proud Boys, who had uh, uh, some ties with the organization that was protesting at the White House to keep Trump in, them is Clans. That go to show you Clans seek out educated black fools. You see, because if slavery come back in, Crystal Clayton and Clarence Thomas, Lester Gillespie, Rodney Jones, and Rodney Jones preaching some of these other sellout blacks, they might be working in the house. But then again, these uh, clans, if they took over again and be like uh, 1619, they might not trust Crystal Clayton, Clarence Thomas, Lester Gillespie, 
Rodney Jones or his preacher or some of these other sellout black because they probably say if they, if they sell out these, they own color, what would they do to us? But y'all Google that up. That's why these people that study getting these group of individual blacks, individuals saying that they gangs. Now, some of them, they guilty as charged, even though they innocent until proven otherwise. When a group of black folks go around killing up other black folks and selling dope, beating up black folk because they can't pay uh, they tab for a $10 rock, then take them Negroes off the streets. Put them on death row if you want to because they're a threat to the movement. Some of y'all don't like that. You see what I'm saying? And some of y'all said, well, he talking division. I don't want to be a part of a group of black individuals or any other individual that's in our black neighborhood. We got it hard as it is. You see, Abraham Lincoln, I believe it was uh, January the 1st. 1863, he signed the Emancipation of Proclamation. Now, we come over here in 1619. He signed the Emancipation of Proclamation in uh, January the 1st of uh, eight, 1863 and didn't give us a damn thing to work with. That's show you how strong black folks is. And, 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 and this is not trying to be racist, but just show you how strong black folks are. But then you got people like Clarence Thomas sitting on the highest court it is. You got people like Barack Obama, the chief executive of a country, a continent, eight doggone years, and he couldn't find one black qualified individual to get on the Supreme Court who served life. He couldn't find one. He found one white and one Spanish. He don't give a doggone about blacks. When y'all gonna wake up? Ain't nobody concerned about uh, 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 in Southeast Missouri. The news ain't following. They ain't following up on John Blakely, who resigned back in I think 2018 because he sent a black man by the David by the name of David Robinson to prison for life for killing a white woman. They ain't concerned about that man was able to resign back in 2018 and because a Supreme Court, I, I, I mean a appellate court judge, a white man said this white individual, I'm paraphrasing, this white individual uh, detective don't uh, don't fit to be a law enforcement official. He's not to be believed. But do you think Brent Farrow, the white sheriff over here in Charleston, Missouri, Mississippi County, do you think he give a doggone about another white detective resigned because he sent a black man to, to prison for life off a of false testimony? Do you think Brent Farrow care? No, he don't care because that's a white individual that sent a black man. But when that white, that black man that worked it for him just turning keys, uh, Baker, just recently last year, when Baker was charged with a white woman inside of the jail said one of Brent Farrow black workers took her into the attorney client uh, room and had her to do oral sex, guess what he did? Oh, he fired him immediately. But yet he is the Illinois uh, State Police arrested his captain, Barry Morgan, a white man, for official misconduct and battery on a suspect. Brent Farrow supported this man. He even said it on the news. He supported this man. He even went all the way to Vianna, Illinois, Johnson County, to go to court with this man and use his white supremacist, white influence, and use the little money because he was adopted. He wasn't a Farrow. Look at his history. He was adopted by some rich people by the name of Farrow. You see what I'm saying? Now, he used that money, that influence, and went down to that Republican ran racist town of Vianna, Illinois. Well, let me back that up. I'm gonna take it back because it may not be all the way like this, but I, I know for a fact he used his white uh, supremacist connections and got 
the greater charge for his Captain Barry Morgan, which was a uh, of official misconduct. Got them to drop that and let him plead guilty to a battery and gave him 12 months supervision for beating up somebody, man. He beat up a white guy, y'all. Where's the white Christian and white Muslim, white Catholics and white, white, you know, white religious people? Where y'all at? But I'm going to leave y'all with this here. Now, you talk about me. You get it in these programs and you have the wrong platform. When you're trying to get your children free from uh, white supremacist corruption, you don't be doing no damn valet. You don't be doing no flips. You take that shit to Hollywood somewhere. Excuse my language, y'all. Take that to Hollywood. You need to do like Brent Farrell did. He stood by his captain. He said it. But guess what? His captain was over there arresting y'all uh, with them uh, the, the, the 19 or 26 that they got on February the 15th, 2024 in Sykes in Missouri, saying that they terrorized in Southeast Missouri. Brent Farrow and his captain, that's a convict, was over there with him. You see, the news ain't going to follow up on that. Y'all get y'all got the clout to bring the news media. Then get the clout to get the news media in southeast Missouri and show how uh, these law enforcement officials, ranking officials. Support. Some of the officers and detectives and captains that's committing crimes. John Blakely. That's a serious individual that's out here on these streets still wearing a badge and got a gun. Barry Morgan, the same way. I'm going to leave y'all. You see, all I can do is give you knowledge. You take and do it what you want to do with it. Y'all, you remember John, uh, Josh Holly? He came down here in 2017 and arrested Corey Huxington, a white sheriff. Not because Corey Huxington and some of the other white sheriff deputies and some of the Charles, Missouri Police Department killed a black man by the name of Tory Sanders from Nashville, a mentally ill individual that shouldn't even been in the Charles, Missouri, Mississippi County Jail. He didn't arrest him because of that, because none of them get charged. And some of them still working today, with the exception of Corey Hutchinson. They took his badge forever. But some of the rest of them still out there. He arrested him because he got the peen in state highway patrol phones, they say. Peen in judges' phones, they say. Illegally pinging judges and state troopers' uh, phones. That's why they got rid of him. Josh Holly, during January the 6th, 2021, on Wednesday in, 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 uh, in the White House, you seen Josh Holly with his fists up with them white supremacists. Power to y'all. Tear this place up. Now, why ain't nobody arrest his ass? I voted for him the first time. But I seen you can make a mistake the first time. Shame on him. The next time, shame on me. I won't vote for him again. I'm going to leave now, y'all. You got white supremacy corruption. You got sellout blacks and white supremacy and corruption all the way to the White House right here in this little old town of 5,947 people in Charles, Missouri. Y'all don't listen to Raymond. See, I'm going to protect my two daughters. I'm going to protect them until the day I die. I know y'all plotting, but when you plot, when you come, I don't care if you the president. When you come for me illegally, I'm going to do like y'all did in Vietnam. You see, them, them boys in Vietnam, I, I pray for all the ones from the United States went over there. Because Frida Payne made a, a song. Bring them boys home. Listen to the whole thing because it was a sister's war. But them over there in Vietnam, 
You couldn't, you couldn't fight them in them trees just like you can't fight me. Look at it. You see what I'm saying? Y'all done locked me up in your jail for five months. Y'all done took my job. Y'all done scandalized my name. But one thing y'all can't do, y'all can't shut my mouth up. You see what I'm saying? I'm going to talk until the day I die. I can't stand white supremacists. I can't stand sellout blacks. These blacks get this education and they forget where they come from. Ain't none of these black educators in Charleston, Missouri, Mississippi County or Southeast Missouri tried to help me educate my daughters. But my daughters is whiz in the, with these computers and everything else. Without the help of any of y'all. But you don't owe me nothing. But one thing about it, if I die today, you can believe my daughters them wouldn't join now one of y'all organizations here. Peace be still.